The World Championships wrapped up and Canada came out with the gold in a thriller of a game. We're going to look at all the games that we can and some of the names uh, that were definitely worth watching this week on the PWHL Puck Drop Podcast. Welcome in. It's time for the PWHL Puck Drop Podcast. Thanks for joining us. I have a special guest this week, and I'm super excited to talk to Parker from On The Fly. Welcome in, Parker. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a great day when you get to talk a little hockey. Yeah, for sure. Parker, um, On The Fly has a, a great, great YouTube channel. He did a lot of coverage on the World Championships and a lot of other international hockey so be sure to check that out. The link is in the description below, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or hopefully watching on YouTube so you can see all the excitement. But um, do subscribe and follow. There's a lot of great information. He does some deep dives. So that's pretty much what we're going to do, um, a medium deep dive into uh, the games that were – Quite spectacular. Um, the finish in both the bronze medal and the gold medal games were absolutely fantastic. What did you think of both of those games? Yeah, let's start with the bronze medal game. Obviously, we like to save the best for last. And <laughs> what what better than a, a classic thriller right to the end, going into a shootout of all? And you know, Finland and the Czechs played played really well, in my opinion. And at the end of the day, it came down to a little kick save by Ahola and Net for Finland that really won them that game. And both teams had a very back and forth effort. And after that game, I, I tweeted out, I was like, "There's no way that anything can be better than that one." <laughs> and sure enough, and I'm going to segue into the next one here. Sure, sure enough. What happened? We had a better game. And that was between Canada and the U.S. And it's always a treat when Canada-U.S. plays in the gold medal game because you know it's going to be, one, tight checking, two, probably going to go to overtime, and three, going to be a good <laughs> game. And boy, did it deliver, eh? Wow. Just another outstanding game between Canada and the U.S. And, I mean, when we look at it, Cernaki with the winner, the rookie coming in and, and really delivering on the big stage. We saw it with that rivalry series game where she didn't pass to Poulin. Right. She didn't pass this time either. And she put the puck in the back of the net. Yeah, it was she she pretty much had to had to do what she did there, but you're right. She showed a lot of confidence. Um it looked like Czechia this this um year could have been more threatening for bronze, but they were obviously missing a couple of very important players and we Definitely want to put a little spotlight on their goalie, Clara uh, Peslarova, who played just great and is um, eligible and declared for the PWHL draft. Goalies are just always a huge story. Um, Ahola herself, a huge, huge story. Like you said, you know, almost single-handedly saved that game for them. Uh, were there any other players in, on either side specifically, you know, Czechia was missing um, Razova, as we know, and um, they had a couple others that stepped up. But on either of those teams, was there anybody that really caught your attention? Yeah, one of the big ones for the Czechs was Danielle was sorry Daniela Peslova, and she was outstanding. But on that defensive line, and she's also PWHL draft eligible, and I think yes. she'll be one to definitely watch for at this draft. Sort of a, an up and comer, especially late. We've seen what this tournament can do especially in bo on both sides of the ice. We've seen it with the men's as well, where my, whether that be the juniors, the world championships, has a lot of impact on the draft, and, and, we've, and we'll see it here with the PWHL. What, what sort of the Women's World Championship impact will have on the draft? If there's any players that sort of make their mark at this tournament that can really build up their draft stock against some of the nation's best. And, and we'll, we've seen it, right? When we look at Canada, they're star-studded with PWHL players. The U.S. went with a little bit more of a college route, so we, we've seen, you know, both sort of styles. We were, I was curious coming into this tournament, which team would sort of win, which style would take yeah. it. And sure enough, it was Canada this year, but, you know, they, they were tight checking games. They're physical games. They're exactly what you want to see out of that kind of matchup. But as well, the buildup of other nations. This year, I think out of all years, we've seen a real scare for teams like Canada, the U.S., you know, whether that be the Finland game with the U.S., that one was tight checking right to the very end. I think it was 3-2 after the second. Or that might be the Czech game with Czechs in Canada. Sure, the game got out of hand, even with the U.S. It was it was basically a tie or one goal game mm -hmm. up until the U.S. put two quick ones in at the end of the second against the Czechs. And they sort of ran away with it there. This tournament, I think, at least in my opinion, is 
the most competitive we've seen over the last couple of years. And it really sort of goes to show sort of how the women's game has evolved throughout. And I think the PWHL is going to have a massive impact on, on the whole, you know, whole women's game, especially at these mm-hmm. tournaments. Yeah. Good insight. Um, the, you know, the, the effect, as you said, kind of there's, there's two things affecting each other, the PWHL affecting this tournament in that, it really showed, especially in the final, that these players have already been playing super competitive hockey and are in basically mid-season form. I think that's probably what made it, you know, elevated it to the level that it it got to. Um, it it was fierce. It was intense. Um, there was a little bit more body contact. It looked like allowed, even though the IIHF does have different rules. But I think they knew that these two teams, you know, wanted to play a certain style, the back and forth. I mean, if that wasn't heart stopping, no matter who you were cheering for, you know, I'm, I'm still recovering. It was just amazing. And uh, you're right. The U S went with the younger look, more of the NCAA graduates um, or, or current players. And they've represented themselves really, really well. Obviously, um, Carolyn Harvey is just somebody that has been fun to watch already, continues to grow, and she still has another two years in university, I believe. Uh, she is incredible. Uh, and Layla Edwards, we just have to, you know, mention her. What were you surprised by her performance? She went from 13th forward to hat trick to scoring in the gold medal game, just looking completely at home. You know, what, what was your impression of her? I mean, how can you not be impressed? Right. She, she, you just said the story 13th forward to all of a sudden being on being the girl that they go to for the big moments. And she put the hat trick when she needed to, she scored, I believe it was up to six goals. It, It was just an outstanding effort from her. And I was really impressed, you know, it's, that's the best part about these terms that there's always one surprise for mm-hmm. Canada. It's normally Jamie Lee Ratre this year for the U S it was like Le- 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 Edwards. And, and it was just really impressive to see how you sort of saw her grow through this tournament. The first goal, you know, she, she sort of looked a little bit sort of timid. And then from there on out, it was just outstanding hockey from her. Yeah. Yeah. They always say, you know, the goal goes right to your legs. The coaches put that player right back on the ice because they're feeling it. Yeah, it was. I mean, she's such a big, tall, strong forward with hands like crazy. I mean, wow, the future for her is so bright. And of course, she was named the MVP of the tournament. I think well-deserved. I'll just go through the, you know, the the official um, award winners and maybe there there's somebody that you want to highlight. So we had MVP Layla Edwards and then what's called the Directorate Awards, Best Goaltender Sandra, Sandra Abstreiter of Germany. Uh, could have been Ahola, but Abstreiter, again, you know, these goalies single-handedly stepping up for their teams. Uh, best defender was Renata Fast from Canada. I think that's well deserved. And best forward Alex Carpenter from the USA just continues to do what she does. We also have a media All Star team, and um, Sunny Ahola was named best goalie there. Renata Fast and Carolyn Harvey were named best defense. And uh, three forwards Alex Carpenter, Leila Edwards, and Natalie Mlinkova from uh, Team Czechia. So those are, those are, players to watch and players that had a great performance, as you mentioned, um, six goals for Layla Edwards and Alex Carpenter as well. The six goals, Caroline Harvey, eight assists was the leader there. Alex Carpenter, the overall point leader or actually tied with um, her teammates, Hillary Knight, who had a great tournament and Caroline Harvey. So the U S their numbers may have been skewed a little bit by that 10, nothing victory, but they were an offensive dynamo all tournament long so any names in there that you were you know really pleased to see or have any notes on for us uh well i'd I'd love to talk about sandra (laughs) abstrider for germany and she was really the story of this tournament taking a german team that wasn't really expected to do that much at this tournament to all of a sudden the top of group b a one nothing game against the Czechs, and the goal was a screenshot from the point that abstrider never even seen yeah 
And sure enough, two and a half minutes left was a five minute major, which put Germany on the power play, which means that they were this close Definitely. to actually making it to the semifinals and being a really ups, uh, uh, just a team that's going to put up a, a really impressive performance coming from a team that wasn't expected to do anything. And we always look to goalies in this tournament, whether that be, you know, Andrea Brandley for Switzerland, whoever that might be. Sandy Ahoa, you could go, the list goes on and on. But when you look at it, that's one of the biggest upsets at this turn was Sandra Abstrider taking down Sweden single handedly yeah. and, and really propelling your team to victory, taking Group B, taking the easier matchup with that Czech team. Just, just impressive stuff from her, in my opinion. She deserves all of that top goalie. It's just unfortunately her team wasn't quite to the level to put the puck in the back yeah. and that would make too most. Yeah, unfortunately, a goalie can't, you know, win. The, they can't do everything. They can't skate down and score a goal. But you're right. She did everything she was asked and more. It will be interesting to see if she gets any uh, starts or if uh, PWHL Ottawa uses her as they go along. There are only five games remaining right now on the schedule. Um, as we record this, the games start Thursday, April 18th, and there will be a sprint to the finish with those five games uh, right now um, Ottawa is in a playoff spot which uh, bodes well for all the players they have of course three players from Czechia now and Carla McLeod so there's that Czech connection there that is really going to be interesting I'm hopeful that Mrazova can play once she returns I, I know she was skating as you told us and we thought she might make an appearance in this tournament but unfortunately she wasn't able to um, so I wanted to just go through, uh, each country very quickly and maybe there's like a name or some uh, particular moment or two. I mean, there are so many, but let's start off with our favorite gold medal winning Canada. Uh, for me, I'll just quickly say, you know, Poulin and her performance, we don't even need to talk about it. Let's just Let's just say, wow, uh, you know, the gifts of her in the penalty box, given the look, she was not going to be denied. And that is Captain Clutch to a T. So as I didn't skip over her, let's just skip over her. You mentioned Sir Dacne, who, you know, played really well, um, as did Julia Gosling, you know, shout out to her. She got a big goal in that game. It wasn't, you know, as dramatic as Sir Dacne's, but you know, I think she um, helped raise her draft stock. So anything or anybody from Canada that you want to mention? I'm going to take an entire line here. I'm going to take the song line, which was the O'Neill, um, Serdachny and Gosling line. I call them <laughs> song the song line. I <laughs> like that. The way their initials lined up. And I mean, they were just incredible at this tournament. They were the Canada's fourth line. Yeah. Yet time after time, you looked at them and you could count on them for offense and, and really just dominant play. Especially in those early games, you know, we saw sort of the line get more comfortable with each other. And once they found their groove, it was just an electric line that you could trust, especially in those key moments. And for me, that was probably one of the biggest storylines from this tournament was just seeing, you know, Canada took a lot of veterans to this tournament. They took a few rookies. Sure enough, you know, Serdachny and Gosling were the two sort of rookies that they took, those younger guns, and they performed lights out at this tournament. Agreed. I like that. I hadn't heard. Is that your own acronym? I, own. Yep. I love it. And, uh, you know, there's something magical when Troy Ryan and um, Gina Kingsbury work out their roster for Team Canada. They added those youngsters, as you said, and then they put them with Kristen O'Neill, which they must have sensed something because O'Neill played the best that we've seen her in a long time. She only has one goal with um, PWHL Montreal this season and has been a little underwhelming, but, you know, hello, she stepped up. Like you said, that line was was probably the best um, all told for Canada. So let's just skip to the U.S. Um, they obviously had a lot of high scorers and great performers. Uh, I think their line of Knight, Carpenter, and Kendall Coyne was outstanding. It was interesting to see that contrast between them and those dynamic young forwards and defensemen that they brought from the NCAA with an eye to the the upcoming Olympics. So anything there that that we should note before we, you know, kind of move back into the P-Dub season, any players that you're you're impressed with? 
Uh, one of the big ones for me, at least, was Kendall Coyne coming back from giving birth. And we weren't really sure what she was going to be able to do at this tournament. But she was stellar. She was lights out when she needed to be and really impressive for the U.S., especially coming off, you know, a, a pretty big accomplishment in her life to, to come back to the U.S. and play a really impressive game. I was I was really happy to see that for her. Yeah, she she did not lose any of her speed. Uh, she has really rounded into form. I think she's somebody along with Natalie Spooner that has benefited from playing the PWHL, you know, both of the moms and having to work really hard and just amazing for both of them. And Hillary Knight, we can't, you know, just um, move on without mentioning that she has also had a very underwhelming season with Boston and this tournament might well have, you know, lit the fire for her. She she looked like her old self. There's something about putting on that USA jersey. Yeah, for sure. And we've seen it, and I hate to compare it to the men's tournament, we've seen it with the juniors where, you know, they some of the NHL teams will send their underperforming rookies down to the tournament and they come back invigorated. Yes. Boston tried it with Patra this year. Unfortunately, he ended up getting hurt and we'll sort of dismiss that as the Bruins fan in the room. But at the same time, <laughs> sorry, we, we've seen it time after time where they send their players to the international competitions and they come back with a full head of steam. Yeah. Would not be surprised to see Knight do that with Boston this year or PWHL Boston this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, you know, I had written an article saying she is one of the, she's the number one key if Boston's going to make a push and we'll see if this performance translates. Uh, we'll get to another player for Boston in just a minute, but we're going in order. So let's talk about Finland. Great performance. Happy to see them get the bronze, you know, get back in the the conversation. Uh, I won't, you know, I already um, highlighted Yeni Hirokoski. It's kind of like, what else is there to say about her? She is simply amazing. What did you think of Finland overall and any players that, that were... A, of note for you i'm going to take the entire team on this one they started <laughs> off on a real rough note losing to the checks right and it looked like finland was done for at this tournament they looked like they were going to go zero and four and get knocked out of the knocked out of group a and go right back to group b sure enough they found their groove especially towards those that us canada they found their groove and by the time that that, that sort of preliminary round was done they were on an upward trajectory, and I had no doubt in my mind that they were going to continue that. They looked really good at this tournament, especially towards the end. And I think it was really impressive just to sort of see, you know, you start off rough, but it's really about how you end in this mm -hmm. tournament with bronze medal. Yeah, this tournament is, I think Canada as well, you know, just had an upward trajectory through the whole thing and, and peaked at the right time. Um, you know, Sandy Ahola, kudos to her. She was named the WCHA Goaltender of the Year and proved why in this tournament. And yeah, happy to see Finland. We've already talked a little bit about Czechia. Any other names there of, of note for you? I'm going to go the other way here. I'm going to take the team once again, but I'm going to talk <laughs> about sort of the downfall of the Czechia. And unfortunately yeah. for them, you know, they started on this all-time high. They beat the big bad Finns. And they were looking like they were going to do really well in this tournament. They played an excellent trap style defense on that first day. And it looked like they had a shot against both the U.S. and Canada. And in those two games, when they played them, they took a lot of bad penalties. The officiating was a little bit different than what the Canada-U.S. game was. And those penalties ended up killing them. And from there on out, they just looked a little bit flat. You know, we saw that in that Czechia-Germany game, that quarterfinal, where the Czechs just kind of looked a little flat, didn't really have it going where, you know, if they would have played like they did against the Finns, in my opinion, they had they, they would have definitely beat Germany by a lot more, even had a shot at the, at the medals rounds, I think, this year. Yeah, it, 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 it was a little bit of a disappointment overall, but, the, you know, with, with reasons. So hopefully it's not too discouraging for that program. Um, a couple of names, um, you already mentioned Peshova, the defender, who is draft eligible, and Clara Peslarova, Peslarova, I believe, Peslarova probably, the goaltender, um, is going to be draft eligible. Be really interesting to see which team picks her up. She could be a number one easily or a 1A. And then Clara Himlarova is also uh, declared for the draft. So those are three big names. And I'll put my graphic on the screen of my draft rankings to watch for. 
I know this tournament, the GMs and coaches were watching closely those other nations to see how they compared. And um, those the Czech players in the league already have been a surprise. So I'm expecting to see some more good things from them. So let's touch on um, Switzerland. This is where I want to mention Alina Mueller. Uh, I want to say good things about her. She is a great, great player. <laughs> You're laughing. like <laughs> It was a rough tournament for her, to put it nicely. And it's just one of those another unfortunate tournaments, right, where – Time after time, you know, you got to bring your game. And at the end of the day, right, Switzerland won the game they needed to. They stayed in Group A for at least one more year. Yeah. So there's that running for them. So it's not a complete fail for Switzerland in this tournament. And she scored and the two goals in that game, right? Yeah, um, yeah when it mattered. So a, a good ending for her. Uh, you know, fans of PWHL Boston, she started off the season really well and like the whole team has just something hasn't clicked and um, we we're hoping, you know, Hillary Knight would have a great tournament and she did. Um, and Lena Mueller ended with a good performance. So good for her. And maybe that'll carry on something though, just is, is missing. And maybe some of the pressure of being, you know, such a high draft pick in in the uh, professional league or, or something like that. Let's touch on Germany. We mentioned Abstrider. Uh, you know, they, they didn't have a lot of offense, but still a good showing. 100%. And we come down to that final game, right? The last two games for them was the loss against the Czechs and then the loss against the Swiss. And both those games were Abstrider standing on her head. And, and it, she just looked incredible. And, and Brandley for the Swiss stood on her head as well in that in that final placement game to see who was going to make it to, to stay in Group A. So obviously a big game to play for with the automatic qualification to these quarterfinals. But at the same time, it was, it was a, just a tough loss for Germany coming off of a really impressive win against Sweden. Of course, all their games, if they wanted a shot at either team, had to be a tight, a tight checking game, had to be close. And sure enough, it wasn't both of them. Just unfortunately couldn't find that final punch. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, as it's noted um, on the website of the double IHF, they, they should be, you know, carrying some confidence into next year in Czechia. And we'll quickly touch on Sweden. Uh, I don't know. It, to me, it was an underwhelming performance for them. But uh, anybody catch your eye on on that team? Yeah, I'd just say the overall youth on that team, right? When we look at it, they're a younger team coming into this yeah. turn and with a lot of, lot of years to grow into what they're going to be. And I think when we look at it that way, they took the U.S. approach, right? They're going to say, this tournament might not be ours, but the Olympics, we're going to put our best foot forward and try and get all our players into their prime for that Olympics. And so for Sweden, this year was sure a disappointment. Did they get screwed over by the, the way the Women's World Championship is structured? Sure. They had to play Canada in the first round. Always a tough one probably not going to win, but they held their own right, right up until the end. And then from there, it's sort of that quick whistle kind of screwed them. And then their <laughs> momentum got thrown away yeah. Canada absolutely sort of capitalized on that opportunity and downhill it went for that game. But Sweden looked good in their moments that they had to be good. They lost a key game to Germany. I think at least in my opinion, if that game, you know, if Sweden would have won that game, got the top spot, they would beat the Czechs. And I think there would have been a serious, serious talk about them taking down mm -hmm. a pretty big contender in the U.S. I would not have been surprised to see it. Yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah, we. Sh it was notable against Canada that they were younger and a little bit smaller. Uh, so that's a team that's building for the future. You had Hilda Svensson. I just, you know, think she's going to be an amazing player. She is not even 18 yet. Uh, let's see, she had four goals, and so did uh, Josephine Boveng, who's 22. So there are a lot of good names on that roster. And we just found out about someone that declared for the PWHL draft. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so my, my Neil and Pershing, for the defender for Sweden, has now declared for the PWHL draft, which would be a huge, huge pickup, whichever team ends up getting her. That, that right there in and of itself is likely going to be your top four defender on any team. And I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see her in a top two on a lot of high quality teams. Yeah, it uh, it was up in the air until just recently. And so she's been on our list with kind of, you know, 
crossed fingers that she would declare, and she did. So Maya Nealon Persson, uh, a great defender, and she's going to you know, make some noise. I didn't mention the Finnish players, Nora Toulouse and Ronja Savalainen, um, who's a defender, and there are a couple of other names. So check out our rankings, but those are two to watch for sure. Um, Toulouse had a really good tournament and will be an exciting player. There's going to be a, a lot of roster shakeups in the PWTL next year after the draft. So that's basically our wrap up. We know China and Denmark did get relegated. Um, I all just also just want to quickly touch on Japan, who at sure. this tournament started mm-hmm. off really rough with a loss to China in that shootout. You know, when you lose to a team that you have to beat to avoid relegation, it's normally a tough game to come back from. Japan clawed their way back. They lost two big games to both Sweden and Germany, but they won the games that counted. They beat Denmark. You know, China had the opportunity. If they all they had to do was beat Denmark in regulation, unfortunately couldn't do it. Both those teams will be sent back down to Division 1A for the next year's tournament, which also uh, it was reported today that the IIHF is going to consolidate it. So basically what it's going to be is all Division 1A, Division 1B, as well as the top division. All three of those will happen at the same time next yeah. year during the PWHL international break, which is a huge, huge deal. And also will encourage a lot more nations to come into the PWHL, which is obviously going to be a huge huge deal for it. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. And uh, what tournament are you looking forward to? I know you um, get on with the uh, world juniors and all of the international coverage. So let's give, let's give your channel a, a shout out. What are you looking forward to? Um, well, for one, it's the Olympics that are coming up in a couple of years because it just with after following this tournament, there's the automatic qualifiers. So all of Group A, so that'd be Canada, US, Finland, Switzerland and Czechia. Those five teams will be in Group A for the Olympics in 2026 in Milan. So that's a big deal, obviously, in the women's uh, side, as well as the Olympic B is Italy automatically because they're hosting, as well as Russia, depending on their situation, and Japan would replace them. So it was a really big deal for Japan to stay above and, and stay in that eighth spot. So they would have dropped farther than that. They might have risked not making the Olympics this year. Yeah. The um, And I guess I'll, I'll ask one question, then we'll wrap it up here, because um, it's we know that Canada and the U S took different approaches to this tournament and was, would it be the youth and the, you know, um, new energy for the USA or some of the veteran leadership and players that are well familiar with each other that worked out for this tournament, but how do you see their rosters shaping up for the 26 Olympics? Uh, do you have any inside scoop on whether Canada is going to get younger or do anything to kind of match what the U S is doing? I find it very hard to believe that the that Canada would throw away their roster after this year. From what it looked like, you know, the U.S. came out with this young studded roster, right? They were going to be the team that was going to prep up for the Olympics. Canada has, you know, one year left-ish to really prepare their team for the Olympics. In my opinion, they're not going to get any younger. They've got their veteran core. They're going to stick to them and they're going to bring that team to the Olympics. It's going to be the good old-fashioned David versus Goliath, the veterans against the rookies. And that's always what's exciting, right? And, and we saw it a lot in this tournament, especially early. The U.S. looked really sloppy. And it was, for me at least, it was unfortunate not to see a team like the Czechs or the Finns play against the U.S. in that opening game. Because in my opinion, they played against them in that opening game. Czechs or Finland probably would have won be just because of how sloppy they played. You know, they were getting used to that, to that sort of faster game, the international game where there's a lot more eyes on you, a lot more pressure. It's just, unfortunately for, you know, the Finns and the Czechs, they didn't get to play the U.S. until a couple games later. And by then, you know, the U.S. had sort of settled into where they needed to be. Yeah. I think we'll see that a lot in the Olympics as well. Those first couple games, if, you know, a, a team like the Finns or the Czechs that play sort of that trap style, mm-hmm. in my opinion, there's there's going to be a little bit of fireworks as the U.S. tries to find their groove, especially early with a bunch of rookies. Yeah, interesting uh, that you think Canada will kind of stick with it. There's... A little bit of time that's going to go by, obviously, for, uh, you know, some of their older players, uh, but they they looked fine. I mean, we obviously look at Jocelyn The Rock, who's the oldest player on the team, but has barely lost a step. And it does look like uh, for female players, it does seem like they can play well into their 30s. I don't know if that's, um, you know, a size issue or if just somehow the experience 
does translate over. So that's interesting to hear hear your thoughts there. And I think the PWHL will have a big effect, you know, in choosing, just like uh, when the NHL chooses their international teams for, uh, you know, tournaments like the World Cup and the World Championships and the Olympics, you look at who's doing well in the pro league and that's going to be um, in effect, you know, upcoming in the next couple of seasons. So that's going to be really exciting to watch. So, well, thank you. We'll wrap it up there. It was a great tournament. We're going to get back to some PWHL action, which we're really looking forward to. And as I said, be sure to check out On The Fly with for some great, great international, maybe a little bit Canada-biased, <laughs> underdog-biased. Never, never. Parker, <laughs> Parker loves his underdog. So, you know, it's fun to it's fun to watch along with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. All right, we'll wrap it up and we'll see you guys in the next podcast. PWHL Pot Drop Podcast. Podcast.